we have talked every game about one pitch focus and one pitch warfare and dominating the one pitch battle and just repeating that for the 300 pitches of these games. It was tough getting on that bus yesterday and those guys knew what this meant and how it felt. We spent 20 something hours on buses in the last five days. So they like, there's been time to reflect on some of this and that's the focus when you're playing really good. That needs to be the focus. And when things are not going well, that still needs to be the focus. And their engagement from the moment we got there into the first inning, like pitch by pitch, the guys that ran out there. And some of the guys were coming off tough weekends, and we knew that. Like basically everybody involved in that game was coming off something that may not have gone well for them on the mound. And you've got to get back on the horse and go engage and bring your A quality stuff. And I thought for the most part we did that. You know, Army, we lined it up like you, you got the left handed hitters at the top and you need to be careful with that part of their lineup. So we thought Army getting into it, maybe give you a couple innings. Um, Joe Charles and Abraham, Abraham lengthening out that game a little bit and starting to get that those breaking pitches going and the change up and settling the middle part of that game and extending it was huge. That was as good as I've seen Oxford throw. You know, he came out of the game at Clemson. He just, I can't explain what happened with some of the stuff up there, but he went from struggling to being as good as I've ever seen him in that environment. It was really nice to, to watch that unfold for him. Like I, I don't know how much you've gotten to to look into Louisville yet with with the crammed week and everything, but they always seem to have an identity of running the bases and playing small ball. Just how do you prepare for a weekend like that when when not many other teams do that at this point? Yeah, no, they're really aggressive. They their stolen base totals have dialed up a lot. Um, they do bunt. They've always been very athletic. They're running a mix of older guys and younger guys at you. A good balance with the lefties and righties. Um, you know. All of the things they do, we have prepared to game plan for. And to be honest, we do it probably in our practices as much as anybody does it. So we've experienced this. Whether teams have done it a lot against us yet, they haven't. And Louisville clearly will. So we just have to execute the things that we have trained to do. And the key to all that is can you minimize the base running opportunities in general by quality pitching and quality defense like it's hard to run and do all these crazy things if you're limiting the opportunities and as much as we like to run and do some of the short game clearly there's games offensively if you don't have the base running opportunities you can't do it so it starts with with that they've got two really good left-handed starting pitchers with three four pitch mixes they're really good they've got a variety of stuff in the bullpen it's a really good team um, they throw a lot at you and you just have to use today to prepare. Clearly, the guys, when you get back at 2 in the morning on Monday and then you kind of regroup Monday and you jump back on the bus Tuesday, today when we get off this call is when the guys will start to shift their gears a little bit um, towards what Louisville brings, and we'll work on it in practice. Link, it was it was already going to be a, a short week before the rain Friday, kind of pushed back to the doubleheader Saturday. Does that, I guess, having – two days less than normal going into this week affect the starting pitching at all? Or is Tam, I mean, the, the short outing, almost a blessing in disguise where he might be able to turn around. That was a blessing in disguise. I, I guess. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to say it was much of a, much of a blessing, but um, it is what it is. Maybe it helps. Um, you know, Jamie felt fine. You know, we knew going in that it was going to be short. So you're trying to protect these guys, number one, and running Jamie back out when he's at a hundred and, 10 or whatever pitches that guy is he all of a sudden if he's at 130 pitches and something comes up man, you're you're gonna have a tough time laying your head down at night um so i think we're i think we're okay like for as bad as this week looks and the double header and all the crap and all the busing and yesterday i i guess we came out of it okay you know in terms of the pitching timeline Hey, Coach, you kind of mentioned regrouping a little bit. Was there a specific moment or a specific leader that kind of regalvanized the team and got them ready to go yesterday? 
It's just the character and the toughness of the group as a whole. There may have been something that went on that I didn't see. I don't think there was a rallying point for this. These guys like to go compete and play the game and win. Like, I think that's what it was about. Um, but somebody's got to perform. Like, you can be all the rah-rah and all the stuff you want. Somebody's got to go deliver the goods, man. Like, that's what this is about. So, did Cantu get that going? If you want to call that leadership, somebody's got to deliver, man. And get me on the board and get me out of the gates. Sure. Joe Charles coming in, hasn't had a lot of opportunity in his whole career. That's some leadership, like leading the team in a positive direction on the field. Abraham is a freshman. To think that, you know, when when you dream about what Florida State's going to be like for you, the Clemson outing, and then you're in the middle of that game in Jacksonville against them. And you're, so Abraham led us. Tibbs led us. Cam led us. Guys, Faro, I, I think it's more the on-field performance with this group than something that may have occurred, if I had to guess. It's just their dedication to the craft. I think Max was on – I mean, Jackson was on base four times last night and OBP over 500. Just, just how pleased have you been with the way that he's worked at bats for you? Love it. You know, you feel like he's a leadoff guy. Some Sometimes he's more patient than maybe our leadoff our lead guy is and works the count. He just does a good job. Like, he's got a good offensive presence and sense of what he's doing and has pretty good approach up there and, you know, runs fine. And I think the combination of Holbrook and West, where you're not leaning on one guy that's getting beat up every inning of every game and having some balance with those two guys, I think it keeps both of them fresh they're just different they're different players that's fine um but jackson man clearly a fun game for him and had some really good at bats and that energy is good and holbrook's been good too they're different players you know starting with right and left-handed hitting but just different and both provide great balance and great opportunity for us to have a clean fresh catching arsenal Link, uh, Florida State hadn't hadn't won the series against Florida in over a decade. I mean, hasn't swept. You'll have that chance in a few weeks and even longer than that. Uh, there have been a lot of times, frankly, before before you got here where Florida State, I mean, it frankly looked a little, I think, intimidated by Florida. Some really good Florida teams in there, too. What do you credit, I think, about, I mean, flipping that that mentality? I mean, do you, do you take credit? Do you think the guys have really embraced that? Well, I, I probably sound like a broken record, but the game is played one pitch and one inning at a time, and you have to attack that. You have to attack it. It doesn't matter if it's Florida or Cal State Fullerton or Tennessee, or it doesn't matter. Um, the fan engagement and how the fans view it and the excitement around the game may change, but I talked to him yesterday about a double-A game we played where some of the big leaguers came down in Tucson, Arizona to a spring training game, and it might have been the highest level of baseball I've ever seen played in front of my face ever. And nobody watched it other than the guys playing in this scrimmage and some of the front office staff of the Rockies. So playing the game at a high level is that. And it shouldn't really matter who it's against or where it is. It's your own maximization of your capabilities managing yourself, your best performance, and then finding the, the flow of the game and what allows you to take advantage of something that surfaces in the game. I haven't ever talked about really who or where or why. I, you prepare, you get used to the facility and a, a road venue best you can, and you go into battle, man, and the guys, the guys did it. They have done it. They did it at Clemson. They did it at Clemson. It didn't go our way. They did it. There were some pieces that needed to be cleaner, but it wasn't that they did not compete in battle. With with Leiter, I think he just never seemed to get in a rhythm on Saturday at Clemson. Just just what did you feel like was the issue for him, and what is what is something he can do to to correct that? Um, kind of the fa I think it starts with the fastball. Like there's certain places his fastball seems to play best, and we know that. Now getting it there consistently can be a different story, right? That slider is a wipeout pitch. Like finding the right time for that, landing the big breaking ball. 
he's probably been most consistent with landing that breaking ball. But when the fastball is not really on point for him or he hasn't gotten it to the spot where it, it plays, that's when he's seen those pitch counts have seemed to, to climb on him a little bit. Um, and then there was traffic, and he wasn't in the zone enough, and they were patient enough that the base on balls got him a little bit. And you're right. Like, he never felt in sync. It never quite clicked for him. Even though you're running four good pitches out, you have to find the feel for what's working best for you, even if it's two or three of those. But I think it starts with the understanding of where the fastball plays best and how to consistently get it to those spots. Link, I know I know there's so many new faces on this team, guys, who weren't there last year. That that Louisville series last year, ending with the series win, even kind of when there was nothing to to play for, if you will. For the guys who returned, do you think that was a, a bit of a rallying point heading into the offseason, showing them kind of the path forward? Could have been. You know, could have been. Army had a really good start, and um, some guys had good moments. And you have 17 freshmen on the team. Every time they got to go out there and play a game, we learned. We learned a lot. Um, and they're better for some of that. Um, but the momentum of winning a series like that, I, I know it's the end of the year, and you felt like the, the season was essentially wrapping up like as you go there. You still have to play the game, man. And these these players have things riding on it every time they step on that field. And you learn every time you step on the field. You learn about yourself. You learn about the strategy of the game. And I think that's what Cam and Tibbs and Ferrer and Whitaker and Army and those guys have kind of learned. Like you just take those lessons in Diamas and some of the guys that Diamas have banged up all year, same thing this year, but they're learning, man. And you're seeing guys that are better from some of the – tough things, and then some of the moments that you felt like you accomplished something um, last year. So it was a good learning and a positive experience last year up there. Yeah. Link, I guess they demonstrated the fact that they did have the level of confidence and the integrity and, and the, the culture that you talked about and displaying the way they played yesterday. But just to – endure what they had to endure those last two games in Clemson and jump out to an early lead, get it immediately snatched away. I mean, winning the game in the fashion that you did last night, I mean, could it have been any better of a solution or a, of a, a kind of a salve to whatever they were having to deal with in process? Best response I've seen. You know, I go back to Knoxville a couple of years ago, like you win Friday, you get it handed to you on Saturday you're either going to respond and go to Omaha or you're done. So that was a really good response. Um, this was unique because of how gut-wrenching those games were. You're up 8-1 to one in the ninth and 11-2. to two. I can't ask for a better response to the first game of the Clemson series than how these things unfolded going into the later part of the game. And guys that we've seen execute and guys that we saw execute yesterday, it just did not go right. Like, they didn't have the feel, and it got away from us. Um, because of how difficult those moments were, yesterday's game was probably the best single response I've seen in a regular season game. In the game of that magnitude, it's real. But what I don't know what they're ranked. I don't know what we're ranked. I just know those are two pretty good teams. And the feeling I had as that game progressed, very unique and how, how hard they fought. Not out of control, but focused concentration on task at hand. Really impressive. 